Hello everyone and welcome back to Filmbook Review, an official YouTube channel of Filmbook. Featured in Google News, IMDb's news desk and a member of the Critics' Choice Association, Filmbook is an entertainment industry news website that reports on the film and television show industries in the United States and across the globe. Today on Filmbook Review, I'll be reviewing the film When I Consume You, a movie that screened at the 2021 Fantasia International Film Festival. When I Consume You was directed by Perry Blackshear, written by Perry Blackshear, and stars Libby Ewing, Evan Dumochel, McLeod Andrews, Margaret Ying Drake, and Mick Casserly. This is a When I Consume You movie review, and there will be spoilers. If you like our movie reviews, please like this When I Consume You film review, as that helps us out with the YouTube's algorithm and consider subscribing. Once subscribed, click the bell notification box, and you're all set. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash filmbook. There's something to admire about low-budget indie horror, and Fantasia's more than welcome to do just that. But there's also a difference between being rough around the edges and rough at the core, and Barry Blackshear's When I Consume You falls into the latter. A modern-day Brooklyn, Daphne Shaw, a recovering addict, and her older brother Wilson, who suffers some sort of social impairment, support each other as they struggle to survive in their working-class lives. The two have been close since childhood, as Daphne, who, despite her younger age, always stood up for Wilson against their abusive parents. Wilson has never been able to give her much in return, but his unwavering loyalty and love, and he hopes to someday have an ounce of the courage she possesses. Daphne desperately wants a child so she can be a loving mother she never had, and Wilson wants to get out of his low-paying janitorial work so he can support himself and stop burdening his sister. After Wilson fails another job interview, he goes to see Daphne, who was just denied adoption once again, only to find her dead, as a figure shrouded in darkness disappears past her fire escape. Everyone is convinced that Daphne killed herself, but Wilson is thoroughly convinced that she was murdered, and won't rest until he hunts her killer down. But that journey will break his body and his spirit, as revenge blinds him to the safety of his own present reality, and an evil force from his past once again rears its ugly head. When I Consume You may be a lo-fi family drama, emphasis on lo-fi, with a horrific supernatural flair, but the extent to which that combination actually works, or is even competently utilized, is incredibly uneven. The three acts seems line up like clockwork, delineating plot shifts every 30 minutes from dysfunctional sibling relationship to ghost story, rocky to off the rails demonic thriller in a tonally jarring manner. Each segment is passable on its own, but as a whole are awkwardly stitched together, complemented by both camera and editing choices that are either patronizing in their lack of trust in the audience or pretentious in their attempt to generate a tedious air of mystery. The handheld cinematography of deep-focused wobbliness that Blackshear occasionally resorts to, complete with an audible shakiness of internal mic ruffling, recalls a found footage aesthetic that makes no sense because first and foremost, this isn't a found footage film. However, it also doesn't serve as any stylistic commentary on the genre outright, nor as a personification of Daphne and Wilson's tormented psyches, at least not in any discernible fashion. It's not only a blatant sign of budgetary constraints, but also of technical laziness. On that note, Ewing and Dumachel are fully dedicated in their performances, but Blackshade gives them very little to work with beyond cliché signifiers of mental illness and addiction. It makes it difficult to invest in their arcs, and it frames the ultimate reveal in a shallow and projected light, which undermines both whatever message Blackshade is trying to convey about inherited demons and the stylistic audacity, which makes the final 30 minutes the most fun the film has going for it. Andrews certainly has a blast as he bounces off the wall in his supporting role, but until that unsettling third act turn, he's more or less just an annoying antagonist. I don't want to be one to bag on the amateur and DIY filmmaking crowds, as that's essentially punching down when there are so many more deserving targets to punch up at, with deeper pockets and shittier morals no less. That DIY mode is also how my friends and I cut our teeth, and... I still find many gigs within those workspaces. It's where passion, gumption, and unbridled creativity fuel artistic works, and for all their flaws, they still leave you with an immense sense of joy and pride. But I'm only human and I can only tolerate so much. Which is to say that having two fully clothed mental breakdown in the shower scenes within the first 30 minutes really speaks to the levels of nuance and originality we're working with here. 
It's like it comes at night in terms of foggy metaphor, but somehow less tactful in its execution of it. Call me cynical, but someone's third feature shouldn't play like their first. When I Consume You is a valiant effort with plenty of potential, but it's weighed down by shoddy construction and dull metaphors. This is a demon that shouldn't be exercised, but straight up ignored. And that brings us to the conclusion of this When I Consume You movie review. I would love to hear your thoughts on it below in the comment section. If you liked what you heard doing this review, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for viewing, and you can watch one of these reviews next.